find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. So Amy? And you, who are you? I'm the guy to save you from all this awesomeness. Man of my dreams, this man of mine may truly kill me. My wife disappeared three days ago. Hello, Internet. Today is August 26, 2014, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk about everything movies from the week before, yet to come, and this weekend, or still something, and stuff. Uh, from Pittsburgh, I'm Malengo at Rambling Mango, and as usual, we have Sorg, Sorgatron. I am here, going? I'm ready, and I movied the crap out this week, Malengo. I can't wait to get to it later in the show. Nice, nice. And also our New York connection, Mad Mike. I saw one movie and a lot of Simpsons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so just hitting it right off with the uh, I'll go. I'll start off with first with uh, the trailer that we just saw. Um, Gone Girl. I think this is based off a true story. I don't really it's at know. least based off a book. Is it a book? Yeah. Basically, it's Ben Affleck not being Batman. How about that? Oh, well, then I'm not interested. Uh, <laughs> well, it's also Ben Affleck not being directed by Kevin Smith. There you go. That's then I'm it. double not interested. If, you, if you're into, uh, oh, this is this is probably inaccurate. If you're into Law and Order, if you like drama and crime mysteries with a, I don't know. Evil twist. <laughs> it, lo- it looks like take him without all the action. Yeah, I, don't know, I, I, I think I'd like this. It, it, Actually, my wife would want to see this. It, it, it reminds me of the Kiss of the Spider Woman or that uh, all that horrible uh, Angelina Jolie movie, like the Bone, not Bone Collector. Maybe it's Bone Collector or something like bone that. Like, yeah, like the, just those those mysteries, right? Those murder mysteries, you know? Yeah, um, that's what this. Is. Th- that's what it seems like. Uh, it, it looks interesting. Uh, I can't wait to catch it on Lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> hey, weekend box office. Guardians has reclaimed its rightful spot in number one. If you've Just ever, barely. if you've, if you've ever gotten like to be a cheerleader for a movie, like this is the movie to do it for. Yeah. I oh, I totally should have checked um, where it ranks. That's to the other movies for 2013 or I 14, think, whatever. I think it's definitely the highest one of the summer. I mm-hmm. don't think it's beaten, but it beat out Transformers. It did beat out Transformers? It yeah. beat out Transformers. It beat out X-Men. Wow. Nice. So it that's surprising because the last three or four, the last two or three weeks, two weeks, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have been on top, so... That's interesting. It's but, almost beaten the Lego movie. But I, I have to say, and I, and I agree with this point that I know I know you have. It is not as Ninja Turtles was not nearly as good as this movie, and does not have the staying power. Yeah, and I mean the three movies that came out. Yeah, I don't even. Of the three well, movies that came out, I think Sin City was the biggest one. So it's for the rundown, for those who don't have it in front of them, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, number one, was $17 million. Uh, Ninja Turtles with about $17 million, just under, actually. Uh, if I Stay at 15 16-ish million. Uh, Let's Be Cops. Uh, when the Game Stands Tall. Did yeah, we even talk about know. that one? Expendables that's is all the way down oh, to number... Oh, football movie. It's all that's the way down to number six movie. on their second week. The Giver and then Sin City 2, which I did not go to see this weekend, uh, falls in at number eight. Wow. That is depressing. That is very, very that's depressing. six million. It opened... Oh, man. Well, Nobody it's, wants to see it, that movie. It's really hard to do a sequel ten years after the original. That's the thing, and yeah. True. Especially when you recast some of the roles and some of the people who were in the original died. There's a reason, I'm sure. Uh, I can't remember all the Sin City stuff, but I'm sure there's a reason. 
you know. So we'll we'll see. I I don't know. I I, I still have to see it. I I want to. I just I'm not. Maybe I'll red box it or something. Wow. Yeah. Guardians. I think Guardians is going to take. If Guardians pulled in 17 million last weekend, I think they're going to take the number one spot for the year. They're about six million shy of taking Wigan. I I don't know about number one for the year. Well, actually, yeah, for the whole year, I guess, but I don't think they'll have the biggest weekend opening because you have the finale of The Hobbit. Wow. A lot of people that are do the, are not thrilled with The Hobbit. Yeah, but I, still, I, they're gonna go see it. <laughs> I, I did this, yeah, I, I I'm going to see it. I had a discussion with somebody who was like. What do you get in the Hobbit? Like, is it like Lord? Of, and I, I was like going through the whole like explanation of you know this is the prequel and this is the you know the follow up and this is the epic battle that should have been in the second movie. We really should have just had one movie. And just like, you're not gonna see it, are you? And like, no. Like, All right, good conversation. Ah, the Hobbit. I'm just kind of tired of it. Uh, like, I, I I've been out Lord of the Rings. I thought you know. Um, Plus everything else that's been trying to be Lord of the Rings over the years. I, I just feel like, like just like Sin City, it feels like it's it's to the well too often, you know. Um, guys, I have an update on the Guardians' total gross. It's yeah. nine million away from beating Winter Soldier. Wow. Huh. Yep. So it's probably going to be at least the biggest Marvel movie of this year, which is shocking. That's <laughs> I'm sure pretty to cool. a lot of people. That's pretty impressive. I think that's good for them. For well, I mean, as I say, for them, hence Marvel. Uh, but yeah, I think it's good for that specific IP. So, all right. So we already kind of touched on Sin City, but yes, ten years was too long. So we will agree with that, correct? Yes. I mean, I think it's sad. I. I mean, without getting too much into spoilers, because I don't really care to spoil this movie. Apparently, nobody saw it. Um, I saw it. <laughs> so uh, out out of out of the six million people, we probably contributed roughly twenty two bucks to that. <laughs> so I actually feel pretty good about that. Yeah, I actually, <laughs> my brother actually paid for me. So yeah, so there we go. Um. Yeah, I I mean, I I had a pretty good conversation at work on Monday about it, and I and I think I was satisfied with that. It just didn't it didn't relate anymore. I thought the stories didn't you know the first movie the stories were entwined, the characters were somewhat entwined. This movie they kept one character entwined, but the stories felt they were very separate to the point when the third story came on. I was kind of bummed because I realized I was still going to be in the theater for about another half hour. Well, I, this is the first in city um, pulled all their stories from the comic book itself. Mm -hmm. Whereas this one had two stories that were written specifically for the movie. And I think that's kind of why it falls apart. That could be why, because like one of my favorite character actors in Levitt I, I thought when his story started, it was a very strong, compelling story. I was like, this is a this story was written perfectly for like this character, for the scenario, this is gonna be awesome. And then it ends with me just feeling like, why did they even put that in there? Like that made no sense. Just to just to explain the essence of Sin City. You know, it's kinda like, all right, we get it. It's a bad place. Well, all right. But uh, I will say this about the Joseph Gordon-Levitt storyline. The, when the first image of him is standing on a rooftop in black and white flipping a coin, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, my God, I want him as Harvey Dent. <laughs> that was the first thing that went through my brain. I'm like, I don't care about Affleck as Batman. I don't care about Superman. I want Joseph Gordon-Levitt as Harvey Dent. Make that happen somehow <laughs> because – I don't care if he was in Dark Knight Rises. He looked good in a suit flipping a coin. And, yeah. and then he even gotten like, scarred up on half of his face later in the movie. So I'm like, he is Harvey Dent a little bit. Yeah, I mean, again, a lot of great actors, a lot of interesting character points. But ultimately, 
And a lot of boobs. Yeah, a lot of boobs. Um, uh, yeah, so I mean, if you haven't seen Eva Green before, don't know who she is, uh, you'll see plenty of her if you go see Sin City. <laughs> oh, yeah, a lot of boobs. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, uh, let's move on, because, yeah, that's just... If you went to see Let's Be Cops, I know this came out last weekend. Um, I I got a chance to see it. And let me just say, this movie was made for 30-year-olds. And that's about it. You have to be, A, a fan of girls, or uh, not girls, um, new girl. I don't necessarily think you have to be a fan of that, but if, if you are a fan of that and you like, and you're of the age of 30 or above, this movie was made for you, and that's that. I, With that I, being said, I loved it. I enjoyed it greatly. <laughs> With that also said, uh, I'm sure there are a lot of people that were like, what the hell did I just pay money for? And since none of you guys saw it, we can't have this discussion. Well, I, I was curious to see it. Like, it, is the humor just like, is it sophomore humor? Or what what kind of movie is it? Like I'm. It's a lot of slapstick, like uh, not not like Dumb and Dumber type slapstick. It's the like, if I'm trying to think what other like like possible. Tommy Boy. No, 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 not like Tommy Boy. Like if you, it's 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 the exact same characters from New Girl. So that's what's like it's hard to describe because it's like they just pulled those guys out and said, "All right, you guys are bums in New Girl. You're gonna be bums in in this world, and you just decide to play cops." I mean, it it just kind of looked like um, the cops from Superbad got their own movie. Yeah, but I will say Superbad had more jokes for the general public. Like, okay. I mean, or for that demographic. Superbad was targeting a much younger demographic. This was like, hey, you know, we're 30. We're not doing what we'd like to be doing. And people, uh, so were, you, people so were responding gonna, to us. So you mean I'm going to learn things if I watch this movie? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not going to learn anything. <laughs> This movie blows an hour and a half of your life, so you can just sit back and say, oh, yeah, I guess I didn't do anything with my 30s. <laughs> okay, it, it's funny, though. I, I don't know. Like, I, If somebody out there, you know, let us know in the chat room if, if you what you would compare this to, because I can't I, it's, I can't envision what movie. I always said this, if you watch New Girl, this would make sense. But that's me. Hey, uh, moving on. Where is my cheat sheet? Arnold Schwarzenegger got a decent script. I'm pretty impressed by that. Uh, so it's a movie called, uh, what the hell is it called? Maggie? Maggie, yeah. Lion Gate acquired the, uh, acquires Maggie, basically. And uh, reading the the story uh, bio basically just talks about um, Arnold Schwarzenegger goes and gets Maggie, uh, his daughter, who has been turned zombie. I guess she's been bitten. So he brings her home, and over that transition of her turning into a zombie, they just basically go over the human element. So basically it's Walking Dead, just more civilized. That actually sounds interesting. That 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 sounds like it could be really cool. Uh, there's some stills here. Is, wait, is this? Are these stills from the movie coming up? Yeah. So I mean, it's so it's so interesting with Arnold Schwarzenegger because he can't be like full on action hero like he has been. Like he has to be actionist old guy. So is this just like Life After Beth? Mm, I don't think it's life. Well, I don't know. I would say it's probably the, uh, as we venture through the path, 
of Life After Death. Because, let's be honest, it's... No, it's, no, 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 the movie Life After Beth, where Audrey oh, slowly life. becomes a zombie. I saw that movie, and I would say... Because it kind of seems like that, only with a little girl instead of your girlfriend. <laughs> I don't know. Life After Beth was a very satire, weird... Yes. Um, but yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it's the same premise. She's still talking and very uh, mobile. I think, though, I think the only difference is in Life After Beth, they don't quite realize what's it, happening. Yeah. Okay. And I think in this one, it's very evident that I think. I don't okay, know. So, okay. This is all hypothetical. Hey, I just saw that Ridley Scott might be doing a Blade Runner and Prometheus sequel. Well, yeah, we I was looking this. at. They said the, uh, the actually the script is is done for Blade Runner sequel. So, I, I again, it's one of those. Does it hold up this far down the line? You know, um, Blade Runner was something I caught on to late, so it didn't really hold up to begin with for me as a classic when I went to experience it let's say. Uh, so I don't know if I would be so interested in a Blade Runner. But then again, love Tron Legacy, not so hot on Tron the original. Again, really late to the game on that. Yeah. I mm, Tron Legacy was a uh, meh. So what do you guys think about Prometheus sequel? Did we talk about this? I feel like we talked about I feel like this. we talked about this a while ago when the news like surfaced months ago. Um, cause they've been talking about it for a while. I mean, it, they really kind of wanted to be the, the new, the extension of the aliens franchise. Right. Um, and it's more interesting. Unfortunately, it's not as I never, I didn't feel like that movie was as marketable, you know, uh, yeah. eventually you're like, Oh, Hey, those are the things that I should know from that other movie. But they never, they were never clear about that. If they straight kind of said, yes, this is kind of a prequel to those other movies. I feel like they would have gotten more traction out of it. It's almost like it's almost like they didn't want to commit to it. Yeah, I guess because so. Once it was out, then you started seeing like trailers with the eggs and everything like that. But you know, just say from the makers of Alien, like that's all you have. To well, you do. knew it was because it was Ridley Scott, at least you know. Um, and there were enough elements to be like, so this is like Alien, right? Like, wait, this is like Alien, right? Right? <laughs> Wait, 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 right? Like you're watching the movie with the same thought in your head, you know? And I actually like the movie. I really did enjoy it. Um, well, the way it concludes, I'm trying to just envision, like, all right, are they just, are they now committing to a prequel of Aliens? Or is this going to be... Well, it's one of those, the, 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 the idea of Aliens, as it is, they've taken the Aliens concept and they put it on now on Earth, the future on Earth, several points in the future on Earth. Um, it's a big universe and it's a big time period. They can do a lot of stuff that's before Sigourney Weaver, I think. So mm. why not? It, it, it's a very, you know, exploratory universe. They can go all these different ways and not even touch all that other stuff they've already done. Yeah, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I mean, I, I'm i a pretty big fan of Ridley Scott, so... But I don't know. I, I think I'm just going to stick with... Uh, I'll wait and see. <laughs> Very <laughs> definitive answer. Yep, that, that's that's good to see. Um, <laughs> no, I'm looking forward to it. I, I hope they make more of them. I like when they've kind of opened the door for this thing and you kind of... Because they didn't answer any questions. <laughs> In this movie, no, they, didn't. It was... <laughs> they really left it open, and it's like, okay, okay, cool. You're kind of leaving it to my own imagination a little bit, but still, it's like you really didn't explain anything in this movie. You put out a lot of questions, threw them up in the air, and then walked away from the answers. Um, and maybe Isn't we'll get a sequel. Just lost? Yeah, yeah, kind of. It's like Lost in Space. Wait, that's something else. <laughs> there you go. Uh, uh, it's like Lost in Space. <laughs> Danger Will Robinson. <laughs> well, I go move on. Uh, movies coming out this weekend. The big, uh, you know, rundown. Absolutely nothing that I would care about. <laughs> as as above, so below. Uh, some well, weird movie where the underbelly life of Paris. Well, now is when we start start to get in all, into all the horror movies with a lot of bad acting and jump out and scare you moments. 
Yeah. Actually, so there's not going to be a lot of movies I want to see. It literally looks like the found footage uh, type style of um, Cloverfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, whatever. Good for them. And then you got uh, that going up against the November Man, which seems like British, uh, whatever. What's the British CIA? I can't believe that's blanking on me. But it looks like CIA, it's like spy versus spy type movie. M7? Yes. MI6? MI6. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, that one could actually be like a fun watch, but saying like, okay, I'm going to dish out like more than a matinee to go see that. Mm, probably not. If but you yeah, want to go see a movie this weekend, go see Guardians again. <laughs> yeah. Go watch Guardians. I really kind of want to go to a drive-in just to watch it. I wonder what it would be paired up against with a, in a drive-in. Um, it's been at the drive-in here. It was paired up with Lucy and the 100-yard journey. Or the hundred. I, I think it was. I think it was paired up with Lucy here as well. Um, trying to find it actually. Wait, my Mac. Uh, I can't talk. Mad Mike. Yes. <laughs> they have three movies at your drive-ins that are paired up. Uh, we have two drive-ins. Hmm. We, we have two drive-ins. He's saying that's what's paired. Currently, when I go at the Pendle Drive-in, it's actually paired with Earth to Echo. Oh gosh. For the Vomit. kids. Ooh, um, this sit, weekend. How about some city, turtles, some city and let's be cops? Turtles and Expendables 3. Actually, that might be kind of interesting. Um, and That's it, not bad, actually. I, I, that'd be all right for a cheap ticket. I, you know, just to see it, you know, I'd watch Turtles again. I'm, I'm cool with that. You know, I know it's shorter. So why not? But anyway. Did anybody go have any interest in seeing The Giver? Because I heard it was a good book. No. I think I'm eventually going to be dragged to that movie because yeah. my girlfriend does like the book. So, I, I mean, it looked interesting, but it kind of just looked like Divergent meets Pleasantville. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to use this weekend to go see The 100 Foot Journey. Go watch Indian people cook. I'm happy with that. Actually, I found that uh, Chef is going to be at my uh, local $2 theater, so I might see if I can go check that out. Chef was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. All right. So what did you guys watch this weekend? <laughs> I watched a lot, uh, Malengo. Um, I, I don't know. There was just was nothing on. Uh, it, it, where where that, that lull before um, you know, the new How season? You say there is no- oh, I forgot. You don't have cable. No, I don't have cable. No, no, I'm not going to watch. Gonna say, how can you say there's nothing on when literally any time you wanted to this weekend, you could watch Simpsons? No, nope, I don't have cable, so I don't have to. You know, that's that's it. Um, I watched last night Gravity. That is not a relaxing movie. <laughs> wow. Uh, no, I liked it, though. I really liked it. And, oh, I thought it was good. And I'm really. There's, cl- there are some things that they kind of force fed down your throat. But yeah. What do you mean? Well, like. All right, you need to care about these people immediately. Yes, and, throws you right into it. Yeah, and by the way, her backstory on life or her backstory on Earth is now extremely important to her survival, and she has super strength. <laughs> and it's also extremely unrealistic. Yes, yeah. I, I, did, I didn't I, see Gravity, but I saw the um, honest review of Gravity with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, yeah, I was reading. I was reading some of that stuff. Um, <laughs> but no, it was a lot of fun. You got to suspend your disbelief, of course. It's a science fiction film, guys, based sort of, kind of around real things. <laughs> so I just take it as that. Like, I don't understand how she. Uh, spoiler! Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Spoiler zone. I don't understand how she received the radio signal from Greenland. From who? Oh, Green- the mainland. Yeah, from Greenland. Um, like yeah. I didn't realize what was going on in the film, but right after that, that radio signal she gets is actually from a, a fisherman in Greenland, and they actually did a short film based on his side of the conversation. Oh, that would have been interesting. Yeah, I don't know where to find it or anything like that, but but I'm, I'm gonna want to. Okay, spoiler zone off. Um, but no, I really enjoyed it. Like as one of those you're watching, be like that would have been cool in 3D. Okay, that would have been cool in 3D. I would have vomited by now. Um. <laughs> I'm very pissed off that George Clooney dies. 
Sorry. Oh, spoiler. Wait, wait, wait. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Oh, it's, a, it, it's been out for almost a year. It's on HBO. Yes, if that's where I watched it, it actually. Now, you, the window has passed. Yes, the window exactly. has passed. Um, aside from that, I watched At World's End. Uh, the Simon Pegg one that was a lot of fun. It's the one where they're uh go back to their old town and they're trying to do like twelve bar bars crawl. in a bar crawl, uh, and then find out something took over the town. Um, it's just crazy goofy humor, and I like that the big guy is like for some reason a crazy good fighter. For I don't even understand why. Um, Sin City, like I mentioned before, I rewatched it. Like I said, it really deflated my excitement for the second movie. Um. <laughs> it did. It, Honestly, I would still go see that movie. I want to go see it. I will see it, but I'm not going to go out of my way to see it. Like, I had the opportunity to sign it. Like, well, I can go hop on the train, go out there, make a day of it. And I'm like, I'm not going to make out a day of Sin City 2. It just doesn't feel like it's justified. Um, if it was like, I haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy yet, yes. But that's just not <laughs> the way that worked out. Uh, I also did a doubleheader Saturday night of Our Idiot Brother with Paul Rudd and like everybody else. Um, and the oh yeah, I remember hearing about that. And that one, that one was uh, uh, he he gets arrested selling weed to a cop, mm-hmm. and and basically his honesty turns around his uh, was it three sisters that he has. Um, it was it was a nice film. It was, it was kind of funny. So it was just you know the perfect thing to say. You know, I, I like these uh random Netflix choices that I make. You know, it's like it's <laughs> okay. the same. These are all Netflix. <laughs> well, no, it was the last two, the last two, the first two were uh, HBO. Sin City, oh, yeah. I own on DVD. Um, but but it's one of those that's been like staring at me in my queue for a while because I'm like, oh, that's, that's some people I know. Why not? You know, those movies you would never heard of, never would have watched otherwise, never would have picked up, you know, at a red box. Right. Because you have your list of things at a red box you're looking for in the top of your head. You know, you're, you're, the hits, the big, the stuff you heard about in the theater, right? This is yep. something that you're going to stumble on and be pleasantly surprised. The other one was The Switch. This was with Jennifer Aniston and the fellow from Extract that I can't recall his name right now. Um, that's in a lot of those those movies. He, he did that recent Spelling Bee movie, too. Um, but basically... She, Jason Bateman? Jason Bateman, thank you. Um, uh She's looking for a surrogate father to be a single mother, and he switches it and finds out he has a kid like you know seven years later. Um, it was nice. It was it was all right. You know, again, nice oh, yeah, random yeah, yeah. flick to watch with the lady. So that's, yeah, that's a lady one. Yeah, um, <laughs> but it was. But it was it was fun. It was kind of funny. So and it had Jeff Goldblum in it, which was I appreciated. So, uh, so that was me. And other than that, I fin- oh, I finished off Green Lantern, the animated series, for those that have been telling me how great that is. Did you cry? Oh, yeah, almost. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I told you. Wow. I told you that was that. a good one. That It all came back together. I'm not even pissed there's not a second season. Hey, Sorg. Because they Sorg? wrapped it up pretty good. Sorg. Hmm. Aya is in the Smallville comic. What? I'm telling you, you need to read this. I know I do. But they closed my library. Sorg, I will give you my comicsology account. You can just download <laughs> everything. Off air. Off air. Anyways, okay. what did you watch this weekend, Mike? Um, I well, besides Sin City Two, which I actually did enjoy very much. Um, Mickey Rourke was fantastic in it. Joseph Gordon Levitt was really good in it. Um, and uh, oh, what's his name? <coughs> the guy I took over for Colin first character, and I cannot think of it. Um, I oh. Uh, it's killing me that I'm blanking on his name, but his arc was really good too. The because he was in the main arc about the Dame to Kill for, mm-hmm. but um, like it it was it was mindless fun, and that's really all I was expecting from the Sin City movie. Like the the we saw it in three for it, but yeah, I I enjoyed it. I mean, I'm kind of puzzled as to why it didn't do that well in the theaters i want i wonder if it's just because people are burned out on movies i think right now i think people aren't excited aren't excited about a frank miller property like they were 10 years ago because yeah. it that was something, something new and different because remember they did that and then they did 300 they're like oh my god it was it was on the rise of like the x-men and spider-man hype yeah so that's true that's when well, that's when being a comic book movie meant something. And how many how many Vertigo films have they released that you don't know are a comic book? That's true. 
these and days. it's Josh Brolin I'm thinking of, and he was fantastic in it. Mm-hmm. He he was really good, and it actually makes me more excited to see him in Marvel properties because I I'm very very excited to see him interact with Avengers, as it were. Mm-hmm. Um, I also saw the finale of True Blood. And I know, I know we don't normally talk TV, but since it was a series finale, I figured I'd bring it up. God, it was awful. <laughs> it was really? Like, True Blood is not... Uh, True Blood is not a good show. It's a fun show to watch sometimes. It's not a good show by any stretch of the imagination. But, man, like, they... Like, True Blood is a show that's built on nudity, violence, and ridiculous, like, like vampires and fairies and werewolves and werepanthers and all these things are real. Um, and you almost get none of that in the finale. And it's just so... Like, the best characters in the series are not in the finale, basically. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. It was, kind of, it was very underwhelming. So you're saying Rhodes not in the finale? Oh, it, like I like the How I Met Your Mother series finale better. Oh wow! Yeah, that's yeah. Good well, it's a good thing I never watched True Blood, but I know somebody in my office who does <laughs> religiously. And I also watched Doctor Who, but apparently we're not allowed to talk about that because Nlenga didn't see it. <laughs> All right, real quick, I'm on board with the new Doctor. Not, not. Excited, excited, but but I'm along for the ride. I will um, let you guys know my approval or disapproval. Please. I am on the fence. I'm on the fence. I'm still going to watch, obviously, but I'm on the fence. I think... I don't know. I'm, I'm going to wait, because next week it's the Daleks, so I'm just going to see how that goes. Oh, man. There's no more sexual chemistry between the... Doctor and his oh boy, they killed that off real quick, oh, didn't yeah. they? <laughs> yeah, they. Although I have to say, um, uh, Strax and Madam, uh, not Strax, uh, Jenny and Madame Vostra, probably one of my favorite couples on TV right now. Don't you kind of wish they they did a spinoff of those characters? Yes, and no, because Strax irritates me. Yeah, but you'd have to be more of a side character. Also, did not need to be a feature length episode. Um, also, no, I'm kind of glad I didn't see it in theaters. Also, also, uh, kind of, yeah, it doesn't look like it would have lent the theaters. Also, really pissed. I had to spend over ten dollars to watch that episode on what iTunes or on Amazon because I signed up for the season pass and they won because it was feature length. It was five ninety nine. Well, no, SD was five ninety nine, so it was seven ninety nine for me for HD. And uh, it made you buy a two ninety nine special. Of one of the doctors looking for the ultimate companion. It was Oh, the Peter Davidson thing. Yes. And and of course you get all like the freebie trailer featurette stuff too. Um, but that was just completely obscene. Um yeah. for them to do. And I know I know in the long run it'll pay off because I'll have all the episodes and in the long run still be probably cheaper than a box set, you know. Um, how much did you pay for the season pass? Uh I, I don't pay the up up front. Uh, oh, okay. You, okay. It's per episode, and if you sign up for the season pass on Amazon, they give you like 5 or 10% off each episode. Hmm. Oh, okay. So. That's not bad. I think iTunes, you have to buy the season pass. Yeah, you have to buy it up front. Yeah. yeah. That's what I did with the last season, so I don't know. All right, so I watched a lot of stuff. I watched Sin City 2. I said, eh. I watched Maleficent. I said, yay. I watched Let's Be Cops. I said, yay. I watched Into the Storm. Twister 2, no? Twister, Twister 2 Electric Boogaloo? No, don't. don't so, in that. other words, if you're going to see a movie about a storm this summer, see Sharknado 2. Yeah, yeah. You'll find more entertaining <laughs> uh, stuff on... Uh, by the way, if I could throw a, a side note, a sideball here, right before I was getting on with you guys, uh, one of the shows I listened to, Triangulation, Triangulation it's a uh, interview show done on the Twit Network, uh, twit.tv. They actually were having an interview with the visual... Uh, supervisor for sh- the original Sharknado, and yeah. he apparently had also done Spider Man Three, and he's done a few other ones. So, like, that, oh, that was that makes so much sense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's done better stuff than that. <laughs> no, I like Spider Man Three, but it makes so much sense. 
<laughs> but it was interesting. Actually, Malengo, I think you'll be interested in this because he was really talking about like the difference between what you know Jeffrey Mark is his name. Um mm-hmm. And I'll actually put a tweet out here for you, Malengo, so you can snag that on my, my account, at Sorgatron, if you want to go check that out. Um, right. I'll just straight tweet that there. Uh, triangulation triangulation 165, if you're looking for that. Um, but no, they get in a little bit more, and they talk about the difference between what do you have when you're on a Sharknado with no budget versus going to like a Spider-Man 3 with a full budget. And they're talking about, like, yeah, we have 30 days to do everything we need to do for Sharknado. Yeah, that's crazy. Period. There is no previs. <laughs> you, know, you can tell. Yeah. No, uh, like, I mean, with a movie like Sharknado, you don't really need it. That's true. As long as long as it's not like a shark accidentally going through someone's leg before it bites them. No, and know? they said, and they said the only, uh, the only uh, real shark was uh, for those that have seen it, the the room where uh, there was like a shark. The the room was filling with water, and there was a shark in there, and and, and something like that. So, mm-hmm. yep, yep. There you go. Uh, but no, go check that out. It's worth it. So, what okay. else we got, Malengo? Um, also rewatching The Office and The Shield. The Shield is very stressful, um, mm-hmm. and The Office is pretty entertaining. It made me laugh a lot. So yeah, that's it. Go rewatch us on Netflix. Hilarious. Oh wait, the Shield's on on Netflix. I think The Shield is on. I forget where The Shield is on. Uh, Amazon, I think. I think Amazon has all the seasons. But, uh, yeah. So, anyway, with that, uh, where can we find you guys, Sorgatron? I'm all over the internet. Hey, if you sign up for the Sorgatron Media Everything uh, feed, it now includes my morning podcast as well as the wrap-up shows and the uh, some more health stuff uh, that we do on Mondays with one of my clients. What's that? And Panel Riot, right? Panel Riot's on, been on there as well. Uh, so go sign up for that on Stitcher or iTunes. Um, uh, it's, it's, you just get everything. So uh, everything else is at SorgatronMedia.com, of course. You can check out all the rest of the shows. Um, and we're here live every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Nice. Mad Mike. Uh, you can find me at MadMike4883 on the Twitters. And I uh, do want to throw a quick shout out to the Pandorica Restaurant in Beacon, New York. It's a Doctor Who themed restaurant, and I had fish fingers and custard for dessert last week. <laughs> and it was delicious. Awesome. <laughs> and you can find me at Rambling Mango on Twitter. Um, also, uh, you could definitely. Contact us on our Facebook group page where we like to throw up random questions, uh, trailers, anything movie related or TV related, you know, whatever. Yeah, a question you just put up now is which would you rather see a movie of Darkwing Duck or Howard the Duck? Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> it's a very interesting question. And, <laughs> and aside, because he's had it up there, uh, 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 uh our condolences to Wheels, who saw Paranormal Whacktivity, apparently, over the weekend. Oh, God. Oh, yes. Why did you do that? <laughs> why did you do... How, how Wheels, you are no longer leading the way. Mm-mm. Man. You're no longer Mm-mm. leading the way. Nope. That's like um, saying you watched Scary Movie 6. Yeah, seriously. Oh. Uh, funness. Funness. All right. Well, with that being said, oh, also check out um, that rambling review where I like to post up my interesting uh, comic strips based on the movies that I saw. So I got a couple that I got to make up, but uh, I'll be definitely posting those on Twitter when I uh, when they go up. Uh, But yeah, with that. um, Yeah. Until next week, have a rambling movie weekend. (laughs) 